that you do for us. We pray that you'll be with those that can't be here today for reasons of being sick or traveling or whatever. And we pray that you'll be with Brother Gary as he brings your message today. These things we ask in Jesus' heavenly name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Gary, you cheered me right up, just right out the gate. You got a person that you're going to trick Peggy in the company leave and sing it, so she could probably do it. They said, well, I guess Johnny might can, so you put me right there below Peggy. <laughs> Peggy, you ought to feel really good. Hey, man, that back a boat. That's excellent. I bet she could, too. Yeah, he, he, we just couldn't seriously have to hold her hands up above. Anyway, good to see each y'all, each one of y'all here this morning. The visitors are so glad to have y'all. Our crowds are getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. We're getting well, folks. Can't wait till all our brothers and sisters get back with us. And y'all just keep lifting them up in prayers because God can heal them and He'll restore their health and get them back. Don't have a few announcements. I got one special announcement this morning. Mary Ann, Jim said, send Audrey home. <laughs> That's from Jimbo. <laughs> He's ready to see all of Hey, man. <laughs> uh, well, uh, trying to see what the announcement we do have. I didn't even read it this morning. Oh, your health and safety is important to us. Last Tuesday, Stanley Steamer came and sanitized our entire church. Information about the disinfectant and the treatment process they used is in your book, and the treatment will be effective for two months. Because that's a good thing. We, we, we got the church treated for this uh, and got it disinfected. Uh, we need pictures for our new members of our church and our new married couples. Y'all get with Jeremiah and uh, get your picture retook and get the, get the families straightened out. Because some of you joined another family, made a new family all together, so we need to get all of it straightened out in our, in our bulletin. Get in fishbowl. Boy, how it, is, it, it just keeps growing. It's over $2,300 now. So wow. y'all be able to, Pardon? Wow, it is a wow. I met the mind, bro. We're still growing. And, uh, and uh, the Gideon is supposed to be here be next Eight, Sunday? 8th of August. Two weeks. <coughs> two weeks our Gideon will be here. So we, we're going to keep it up every year, or all the time, but we've still got two weeks to get it built up even more. So y'all be in prayer about that. Any other announcements? The uh, tree, little white tree out front oh, of the yeah. foyer is uh, for John and Jessica. The baby should be here by the 20th of August if she didn't go before then. But with all the COVID and everything, they didn't want to have a shower. So yeah. uh, if you want to put a little card on there. But anyway, it's a little money tree for the baby. That's Thomas Wade. Thomas Wade. <laughs> yeah, that's that turn to four year. Any other announcements? Prayer request? Okay. I've got a couple. Um, please pick put my, tr my friend Teresa Williams back on self-medicating and so she's going through withdrawals and has had a very very rough week and there's a lot of blanks in her memory and things so just prayer not only for the physical healing but the mental healing right. as well uh, what's her last name on it? Schmidt S-C-H-M-I-D-T what else? next week um I hope I don't have to have the procedure. I've had it once before, but a bone graft, a tissue graft, and we'll see Tuesday. Larry Payne, she's been that route once. Anyone else? Okay. Brother Randy, good to see you back with us, buddy. Would you lift these people up in prayer, please, sir? We're just coming here today just thank you and praise you over at the your house. We lift all these people up today, Lord, and we pray to this. You just see what these people up. You know the needs, Lord. We know you're the great physician, Lord. We know what we ask. We believe, Lord, that this will be done in your name. Lord, we just pray for the church here. We pray that it's stronger, Lord. We pray that each one of us be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So we have to go out and witness to the law store. This building is uh, being alive. You call each one of us to leave. But we ask all these things in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. I do want to say that uh, Brother Gary did an awesome job last Sunday night. And if anybody that didn't go missed a, a great pleasure. Uh, we need to all pray for this uh, this type of, of getting together and joining the churches together, denominations, and it's all about the Lord. It's not about, about different denominations. If we love the Lord, we, we know the Lord will we're all going to go to the same place. All right, if you will, page 469, we'll sing all four verses of 469. <laughs>
to give to those that are sick and needy, Lord. Please be for the years of mine's message to us. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> listen to the Sunday school lesson that's a uh, live broadcast from Redwater Baptist Church. I think it's the same Sunday school books they use. Anyway, the lesson was about um, <clears throat> not setting our sights on things here on earth. We know that's just temporary and it doesn't matter <clears throat> how much we amass, yeah. how much success we have, um, how much we try to live up to standards of what people think are successful things in life, you know, like cars and you know, more material things you have. But anyway, um, we should set our sights on Jesus Amen. and things that are in our permanent home. So I have no accompaniment music, but um, this is a beautiful song that we sang when we were little kids with our mom and dad. Terry, would you move those mics closer? I will. I just, in a minute, if I'm, I'm not so emotional, <laughs> I can be louder. <laughs> well, I'll just hold this one. <clears throat> anyway, the name of the song is, um, I've Got My Heart Set on Heaven. I heard of a beautiful city where streets are paved with pure gold and I've read in the Holy Bible that the half has never been told and I've heard weary Christians say how they're longing to go to a wonderful place called heaven where we'll live and we'll never grow old. Hey, hey. I've got my heart set on heaven. 
a heart and a crown, a mansion of gold. I've got my heart set on heaven. Oh, how I'm longing to go. Yes, I've got my heart set on heaven to gaze at his face to stand near the throne i've got my heart set on heaven oh how i'm longing to go Thank you so much, uh, Sister Terry, for that beautiful song. And uh, you know what I love about it? It's straight from her heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. That means a lot to God. Did you know that? Uh, if it's not from your heart, he just pretty much don't want it. Amen? He wants everything that we do to be from our heart because that's uh, his dwelling place. That's where he has filled us with his spirit. And, uh, and we are, are his people. And we need to start acting like it. Amen? Amen? It's high time that the people of God started acting like the people of God, being the people of God, and letting the lost world see who they are. Amen? Amen. And, and, and more importantly, to see who He is. That is our work. That's our calling. That's why the Lord saved us. And uh, so our work of salvation has began at the point of our salvation and will only end when we see Him in glory and are made like Him. Amen? Until that time, we're a work in progress and we're a progress at work. Amen? And so we need to be at work. We need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be sharing our testimony. We need to tell people what it is we know about Jesus and how we know it about Him. Amen? We need to let them know that we're a people of faith. We're a people who believe. And every one of us believe He's coming back. And He's only coming back for people who waiting and watching for Him, His own words. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's time for us to start watching and realizing. If you have your Bibles, uh, I will first of all welcome all, all of you today. And, uh, and our visitors, thank you for being here today. And, and those who are coming back from uh, their quarantines, and uh, we, we, we just thank God to see you back. And, and uh, we've got uh, between... Uh, 26 to 27 people that uh, have been infected with COVID. We still have some that are really sick and really struggling. We still have some in the hospital. We've got one in a nursing home right now in, uh, in rehab, and, and there's a lot going on, a lot to pray for. Uh, and so we need to be continued to lift these folks up in prayer. And, uh, and uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we want to t keep up with them, and I always encourage y'all to to stay in touch with them and say it, and, 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 and but some of them just don't feel like talking, I can tell you that right now. And so if you get a message on their message, uh, answer machine, just leave them a message, say I'm praying, I'm thankful that, uh, you know, I'm praying for you and I hope you get uh, well. Uh, and if you don't get a call back from them, don't be offended by that. And uh, sometimes when you call them, they don't even talk like themselves anymore because there's a there's a lot to this stuff right now so be a key stay in prayer for them no don't forget them amen and uh welcome back to the ones that are are back already if you have your bibles would you turn to the book of luke chapter two we're going to be reading uh, a familiar uh scripture to you uh it's kind of at the end of the christmas story and uh and it's one that the lord has laid on my heart as i studied that uh this scripture this week uh, to, to be able to share with you today and I think there's some things that the Lord wants us to see in and understand uh, from it. Luke chapter 2 verses 21 through 40 And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, 
they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. <coughs> As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according uh, to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and of two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have, have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and to the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to us, Lord, through this Holy Ghost as only you can do. And help us to see how great the scripture is. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've, we start this scripture off and, and, uh, and Mary and Joseph have taken Jesus uh, on the eighth day. He's eight days old. And, uh, and they have taken him to be circumcised. And this is an event that was commanded uh, in, the, in the Old Testament to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verses uh, 9 through 14, when Abraham was commanded by the Lord that circumcision would be a part of his people and his descendants. Uh, and, and at that time, they officially named him Jesus uh, uh, as the angel Gabriel, who had appeared to them earlier and was sent by God to tell them these things. So the father named his son, his name, his name is Jesus, and they, they proclaimed this. After this uh, took place, uh, Mary had to go through a purification <coughs> process. And so it, it, it mentions in the Bible that at the end of her uh, purification, uh, that, uh, that they took the child, her and Joseph did, uh, and took him back to Jerusalem to the temple, and, and there they were going to dedicate him. Her, Purification process for a male child was 33 days, and, and you can find that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 2, and uh, Exodus 22 and 29, and, and Leviticus also. And it was done in the temple, and the, the sacrifice consisted of two turtle doves and two pigeons. You say, Well, Brother Gary, why are you going through all this stuff? Because we've been studying this stuff on Wednesday nights. Amen. Amen. We have been right smack dab in the middle of these very scriptures for the last several weeks in Leviticus, and we're trying to see and to show where the Old Testament uh, sacrifices and the things done in the Old Testament is something that has, has taken place in the New Testament that Jesus Christ come to fulfill all of these things. Amen? And so this is a present in the day of Jesus because of the, the dispensation had not changed yet. They were still under the Old Testament law. So they had to obey the Old Testament law and bring Jesus for his circumcision. Then they had to bring him uh, to present him uh, unto the Lord. And, uh, and the Bible tells us why this had to happen in uh, verse 23. It says, as it is written in the law uh, of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to, to uh, which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and of two pigeons. Now, they were getting ready to do this stuff. They were prepared to do this stuff when they walked in the door. And, but there was something else that was fixing to happen. See, there wasn't nothing about Jesus Christ that was normal. Everything that happened in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ from his birth till his death was nothing ever normal about it. Because, see, God was in a process 
of making a change. He was in the process of fulfilling the law. He was in the process of making a new way. He was in the process of, of fulfilling the Old Testament and giving us a New Testament. He was in the process of bringing a light, not only to the Jewish people, but to the Gentile people. And hallelujah for that Amen. this morning, because we are saved today because of what God did then. Amen? And so God wanted everybody to know who this, uh, who his son was and what it was about him. And you would think when he was a baby, just he said he's 41 days old at this time. He was eight days when they, they did this. She went through 33 days. So he was either the 33 days or the 41. I don't know. You can just figure it out in your own head. But here they come with this baby. He don't know. You know, but how many of you ever held a baby that young? They don't look like they know much of nothing, do they? Anyway, he's just being carried along because he's an infant. He's a baby. He is a real baby, just like the babies that we have today. He was flesh and blood, a baby, yet he was still Jesus. He was still God. Amen. He had to be a baby before he could be a boy. He had to be a boy before he could be a man. Amen. And he was raised up that way. And I'm thinking, I thank God that he, he was raised that way because that way he knows everything from the day we're born to the day we die, how life treats us. Amen. Amen. He was treated that way in his life. And so he, he, as they walked in and they're holding this baby, all of a sudden this man, he comes bursting into the scene and he comes running toward them. And I don't know about you, but when people do me like that, it kind of scared me a little bit. Amen. Amen. But see, this man wasn't coming with any vile intentions, any evil intentions. See, because the Bible says about this man that the Holy Ghost was upon him. Amen. Y'all, how many of us is the Holy Ghost upon today? Well, I hope everybody says, not me, he's in me. Because, amen, the Holy Ghost is in us today. But the Holy Ghost had not been poured out at, at, the, at the day of Pentecost yet. There had been, uh, John the Baptist had been filled with the Spirit. The Bible says that he was born from the womb filled with the Holy Ghost. His mother, his mother Elizabeth, was filled with the Holy Ghost when Mary told her about the angel's visit and who, who it was that she carried in her own womb. And the Bible says that, uh, that, uh, that Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Ghost. And then when Zacharias, John the Baptist's daddy, wrote down the name John as the angel had instructed him, the Bible says that he was filled with the Holy Ghost and he immediately began to, began to prophesy and tell the people what John was going to do. Amen. And so there was only those people that I know about that had been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But this man was the Old Testament guy. Amen. And the Holy Spirit was up on him, just like he was up on Samson and others in the Old Testament we read about, that the Spirit would come upon them. This man lived his life, praise God, with the Holy Spirit on him. It just goes to show you that the Holy Spirit would stay with them. The Holy Ghost would guide them and lead them. And the same way that we experience being the sons of God in the New Testament, Simeon experienced in the Old Testament because he was a son of God. How do you know? Because he was led by the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible proclaims that here in just a minute. Amen. And so he comes running up in there and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And uh, and look at the description of this man. I love this man already and never know him, but I'm going to get to meet him one of these days. He said he was, a, he was a just man. He was a devout man. And he was waiting on something. Amen. Sound like us, doesn't it? Amen. We're supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be just people. We're supposed to be devout people. And we're supposed to be waiting on somebody too. Amen. Yeah. We're supposed to be waiting on the same one he was waiting on, but in a different time and a different dispensation because the one we're waiting on is going to come back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was waiting on a baby to show up. Hallelujah. And he was excited. Let me ask you a question. Are you excited today about that? Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell. <laughs> you know, I know a fellow one time, and I sure ain't gonna call her name because some people worked at the mill would know him. But uh, they pulled an evil trick on this guy. They had been buying lottery tickets. Amen. And this fellow bought a lottery ticket. He was really quiet. He was reserved. You never hardly heard a word out of this guy. He very rarely even talked to you. Matter of fact, if you had a conversation with him, you're going to start it and you're going to keep it going and just stop. 
Well, they got his lottery ticket number somehow, and they made a phone call and and called him and and quoted those numbers and told him that he had won the lottery. <coughs> now listen to me, y'all. That quiet man that you couldn't get a word out of, they said he hopped up on the picnic table in the break room and began to dance and shout. Amen. He was doing that over a lottery. Your Sunday school lesson today was about things of this world and the money and the, all that stuff. That made that man shout. Let me tell you what. If anybody got a reason to shout, it's the people of God who are Amen. filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Where is that excitement? Where is that enthusiasm? Where are those hallelujahs? Where, where, where is the excitement of he's coming, he's coming, he's coming? How many of you look to the east often and you think hey, he's coming from that direction? I tell you all this all the time because I do it all the time. So this man is doing his daily routine duties. He's working in the temple. Bible don't say that it was his time to do the, the sacrifices. It don't say that. I don't know what he was doing. He might have been scrubbing brass pots. He might have been baking showbread. He might have been doing can, uh, can, uh, uh, lamp oil in the can. I don't know what he was doing. The Bible don't say. But whatever he was doing, the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Now listen to this. And he heard the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Praise that. Amen. Jesus Christ told, tells us later on that you're going to know my voice. You're going to hear my voice. And when you hear my voice, you're going to know it's me. He this man is. He's out there doing something. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost says, He's here. <laughs> Don't say that's what he said, but that's what he did. He let him know he's here. And this man, whatever he was doing, Sister Pat, he dropped it right now. Amen. Because he's been waiting all his life up to this point for this very moment right here. He's here. I got to go see him. I got to go look at him. I've been promised this. And I want I want my promise. Hallelujah. How many of you have been promised anything by God? How many of you know the promises of God that he has for you and for me? We are to be anxiously awaiting on those promises. Some of those promises get fulfilled here. We need to know what they are. Amen. So we can claim them. We can stand on them. And we can quit letting the world beat us down to a pulp where we just look up and go, oh! Uh-oh. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the world ain't supposed to be beating us to a pulp. Listen to me. We're supposed to be beating it to a pulp. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be excited. We're supposed to be on fire. The Bible says that when John the Baptist proclaimed who Jesus was, that he's, he that's coming after me is mightier than I am. I'm not even worthy to unlatch and latch his shoes. And I baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. It's time that we get some fire in our lives. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's time that we have fire. And we ain't done nothing but smoldering. We, we act like a bunch of people that the fire has been put out by a bucket of water and there's just enough embers left that there's a little smell to us. God help us. This Old Testament man, he wasn't about to let that happen to him, Brother Troy. He was on fire for God. He was waiting on God. He believed God. Hallelujah. And when that Holy Ghost told him he's here, he jumped and ran. He wanted to see for himself with his own eyes that there he was. Yep. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Look at verse 27. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. Did you come into the temple today? Did you come in here today led by the Spirit? Or did you just come because, well, this is why I'm supposed to be here. Everybody expects me to be here. Come on. Amen. <laughs> well, you know what? We're talking, I, I, I don't know how many of y'all was at that unity service last Sunday night, but I was stoked. And you know why? Because there was people up shouting. There was people up saying, Preach it, brother! There was, they was two black preachers on the front row. And I tell you what, they ran at me 15 times. And, and they would finish my sentences for me. They would give me another scripture. And I tell you what, I loved every second of it. I felt at home in that atmosphere. One of these days, we're going to be in heaven. 
Preach it. Amen. How come y'all are so quiet still? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you not believe it? Do you not feel it? Do you not see it? We have been beat by this world so much that we forgot who has all power right. in heaven and in earth. We have forgotten that we're on the winning side. Right. Amen. We have forgotten that we have a lot to rejoice about. We have forgotten that we got a lot to shout about. We have forgotten that we're going to win this war because he, <laughs> he has overcome the world. Amen. Amen. We win. Amen. And we get up every day and we turn that stinking one-eyed devil on and we listen to those news people. All the world's coming to an end. All the Democrats is doing this. All the Republicans are doing this. Oh, woe is me. Everybody's dying around us. It's awful. It's all around. Something on your head. Cover yourself up. Get some bubble wrap. It's all over with. We're all going to die. Yeah, we are. But let me tell you what, I know one thing, Brother Johnny. When I die, I'm going to wake up looking at Jesus Christ, my Lord, because I am saved. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad if death comes, bring it on. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And we're so afraid. We're so afraid of everything. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. If I do this, this is going to happen. If I do this, this is going to happen. Where is God? Mm -hmm. Who is God? Who is your God? Are you filled with the Spirit of God or not? And this man, he comes running in there because he's lived his life just and devout, waiting, believing the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost has revealed to him. He came into the temple and he went to the parents and had brought the child in to do for him after the custom of the law. And look what he does. He takes this baby. And he picks that baby up and he looks at that baby. Can you imagine what it must have felt like to hold that baby? Mm -hmm. Amen. Can you imagine what he must have felt being the man that he was, filled with the Holy, with the Holy Ghost with him like he was, being led of the Spirit like he was, waiting and this is the promise. And he didn't say, what? This is it? He didn't say that, did he? He didn't say that at all, did he? He looked at that baby and he, he began to prophesy. He began to preach. Amen. He said, and look at what he said. He said, now, Lord, you, you can let me die. You can let me go because I have held the salvation of this world. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. He said, you can let me go. You can let me die. I can depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation amen he, he didn't have to be a king in shining armor he didn't have to have the crown he didn't have to have a sword he didn't have to be on a white horse this man had heard from the holy ghost he knew truth that those other religious bigots and hypocrites didn't know because he was led by the spirit not by liars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Amen. <laughs> and he said, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of thy people, a light to the light of the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people is Israel. Amen. You know what? He even knew that this baby was going to bring salvation to us, us old grungy, scroungy, dirty, filthy Gentiles. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, see, these Jews had a thing about Gentiles. They couldn't even touch us. They wouldn't sit at the table with us. They wouldn't have anything to do with us. Uh-oh. So what makes us treat people like that today? Now you need to be quiet. What makes us think we're better than another person? 
What makes us think that we're too good to associate with certain people? What makes us think that God can save us but can't save someone else? What makes us think that we're supposed to be the ones who decide who comes to church, who joins the church, who gets saved and who don't? Where do we get that? Amen. Man, it's real quiet in here. Preach it. Who do we think we are? Let me tell you who we are. We're nobody without Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ didn't come just to save select people. He came to select to save all people. He died for the whole world, every nation. And the Bible tells us, if you go in Revelation and you read what John saw, he said, and I, John, saw people from every nation, from every kindred, from every tongue, standing before the throne of the God of all glory, praising His holy name. He came to save the world, not just one particular group of people. God help us. I'm sorry, I still got this kind of unity kick on my brain because the Lord's put it there. He put it in my heart. And it's time that the people of God became the people of God. Amen. And quit to, to decide, talking about how much we're different and start going back to how we are alike. Yeah, and it starts right here, holding this baby in his arms. This is the beginning of all people coming to know him. Amen. Yeah. And he proclaimed it. He knew it. Because he was he had the Holy Ghost and he was listening to the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will never lie to you. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God may put you in a bind and ask you to do something you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. You remember when old Peter was uh, was uh, at Joppa? When he was uh, he was hungry. Man, they was fixing food. He could smell that food cooking. And the Lord, he went up on the rooftop to pray. And the Lord sent this sheet down. And in this sheet was all kinds of unclean animals that the, the Old Testament had told them, you can't eat these animals. And the Lord told Peter, he said, Peter, take and eat. He wouldn't do it. No, Lord. Uh-uh, these are unclean. You know better than to offer those to me. The Lord did this three different times. And every time, Peter would tell him the same thing. No, Lord, I can't eat these. The law tells me no. And the Lord taught Peter a very important lesson now. The Lord taught Peter this. What I have cleansed, is not unclean. What I have told you to eat, and I have cleansed it for you, you better eat it. About that time, there was a knock on the door. And here comes this man. Amen. And he said, uh, I'm a servant of Cornelius. Amen. He's no Gentile. And the angel of the Lord has spoken to this man. See, Cornelius was like Simeon. He was a devout man too. And he was a praying man. And there ain't no doubt in my mind the Holy Ghost was with him too. And the Bible said about that man that a memorial had gone up before God. This, this unclean, unholy man had access to the throne of grace through prayer. Go figure. And God had heard this man's prayer and he had watched this man and this man had helped poor people and given money away like it didn't mean nothing. That's what the study is about today, by the way. It didn't mean nothing to him. He said, I want you to go to him and I want you to tell him about me. 
Amen. And so Peter did. Thank God he went. He went. And when he got there, he began to proclaim Jesus Christ to those people. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost fell on those people just like it had fallen on Peter. And it blew Peter's mind. Uh -huh. It blew Peter's mind. And you know what Peter said? Something we still repeat kind of wrong there once in a while. Peter said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. You know what he was saying? He'll save anybody. That's what Peter was thinking. If he'll save these folks, he'll save anybody. Amen. Hallelujah! Aren't you glad that he'll save anybody? Anybody that will listen? Anybody that will believe, anybody that will receive, he'll fill them with the Spirit and he'll save their souls. And this is what Simeon was preaching to them. Amen. He's the light to the Gentiles. And he'll be the glory of thy people. And let me tell you what, he wasn't the glory of his people then. That's coming a little later on. But he's going to be that. Amen. 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 And when, look at the reaction of Joseph and his mother, uh, Mary. They marveled at those things spoken by this guy. Who is this guy? Where does he come from? Who is him? How does he know these things? How, who is he? Because see, Mary and all of that onslaught, she hadn't been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. So she didn't understand these things. Amen. And Simeon blessed them. And then he had another important prophecy to make concerning her. He looked at Mary and he said, Behold this child. He set for a fall and a rising again. He knew that Jesus was going to die and rise again. He knew. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? How the revelation of the Holy Spirit of God can reveal something to someone way before it ever happens. Amen. This man was an old, you never hear him mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. He, they don't even talk about him no more. And here he is. Amen. He said, he set for the rise and the fall again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against by the people of Israel. And he looked at her and he said, a, sh a sword shall pierce through your own soul. Mary probably never understood that until she stood there and watched them kill her son. And she knew then what Simeon had meant. She knew then what he was talking about. But you know what the beauty of this story is, Brother Steve? When Simeon held that baby, and looked in that baby's arm, in that baby's face, <laughs> held him in his arms. And he said, I, I have seen the salvation of God. That later on, not many years later, this man was going to die. He was going to go to his reward, Brother Randy. And that baby that he held was going to come back and hold him. And present him to the Father. <coughs> Say, Father, I am the salvation of this world. And I present this man who was led by the Spirit to you. And the Father is going to receive him gladly. Y'all, that same thing is going to happen to every one of us one day. All of us who are called by his name. All of us whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We're going to face him one day. And we're either going to be welcomed or we're going to be run off. And I pray with all of my heart that you are filled 
with the Spirit of God. Amen. That you are led by the Spirit of God. That you hear the voice of the Spirit of God. I was talking to a man just yesterday and he was telling me how he was so torn up on the inside because he had done some things that he was regretful of. And the, and the Holy Spirit was just eating him up. And I listened to him. And I said, yeah, you better do what the Holy Spirit is showing you to do. But I said, this is one thing you better be smiling about and glad about. That the Holy Spirit is in you and you're having this warfare right now. Mm -hmm. Tells me he's there. Uh -huh. What we need to do is start listening to him and quit arguing with him. It's high time that our spirit began to agree with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And quit fighting him and arguing with him. And just do what he's showing us to do. Live our lives in the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Filled by the Spirit. <coughs> Believe in the Spirit. And let every action we do for the glory of Jesus Christ be led by that Spirit. Simple, isn't it? Amen. All we got to do is do it. But what I hear all the time is people, they come, they say they're saved, and they disappear. They come, they even become active, and then they say, we're not coming back again. What happens to us? We quit listening. We start listening to the wrong voice. We start listening to the lust of our body. We get angry at people and we don't find a way to forgive them. We allow somebody one wrongdoing and now you've had your chance, buddy, it's over with now. I'm done with you. Is that what the scripture teaches us as children of God? Wouldn't it be horrible if that's the way God did us? Yeah. You got one chance, buddy. If you don't do this, there's only no one sin, one miscue, and I'm going to send you to hell. Thank God that our God is not like that. Thank God. That His grace is sufficient for all of my needs. Thank God that His mercy endures forever and He keeps forgiving. God help us to be like Him. Our goal in this life ought to be to be like Him. And if we set Him up as our standard, we're going to quit looking down our noses at other people. Because we're never going to achieve that goal. If we set that our standard, we will never ever be there until we're with Him and He makes us like Him. Until then, listen to me, we're sinners saved by grace. And the only difference in us in this world is that they're sinners. And they're not saved. We gotta learn how to convey that. And I know that sounds oh, 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 that ain't right, that ain't right. We all believe that one sin will keep us out of heaven. It shows our need for Jesus Christ. But once we have Jesus Christ, one sin ain't got a chance to keep me out of heaven. Amen. Amen? Amen. Because when He saves me, He does something for me. He redeems me by His blood. And that precious blood is what washes those sins away. 
He writes my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he don't erase it. Amen. Amen. He fills me with his spirit. He empowers me to read his word, understand his word, and have knowledge of him, and have power to continue every day to live for him. He not only fills me when I'm saved, but he will fill me over and over and over and over again. And I can stay full of the Holy Spirit. When He forgives me, He casts my sins away from me. He don't even remember them anymore. Because they're under the blood of Jesus. He don't see black sins anymore. He sees washed sins. And they're white. That's our God. That's our salvation. And it was all provided by this baby named Jesus who became a man, walked this earth, and died for me. He rose again. He poured out His own Spirit he says, I'll be in you and you'll be in me. We'll walk together. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'm always there. I see everything you do. I hear everything you say. I know everything in your heart. I know you. It's high time. We acknowledge that Savior. And the only thing He requires from us is to share our experience with other people and to be created in Him to do good things for other people. We're not called to be judges. We're not called to insult. We're not called to call people down. We're called to obey Him. He is our God. He is our Savior. And the great advantage we have over Simeon is that the Holy Ghost ain't on us. He's in us. Would you stand? <clears throat> These altars are open for prayer. I know I've said a mouthful of today. I know this message is probably not a shouting message. It's a sobering message, isn't it? Every one of us acknowledges and believes that we're living in the last days. We all believe that evil is growing, that it's becoming overwhelming. We all say that and believe that. Every one of us will say to another person, I believe Jesus could come at any time. And yet here we are as a people. More divided than we've ever been. Divided by what the sign on the church says up front. When we ought to be more united than any people on this planet. Because we're saved by one Savior. We're filled with one Spirit. We have one Word. There is one church. There is one body, and we're part of that body. We are not the head, but Jesus is. It's time that we take up our cross and follow Him. It's time that we grab hold of the plow and quit looking back to what could have been and look ahead to what is. It's time that we became the people of God. 
the church that Jesus built. God help us today. These altars ought to be full right now. I know I got lost in the stuff of Sunday night. I've been here and oh, you did so good. Oh, it was so annoying. And that's, I, thank you. Did y'all know there was a woman that came to that altar? She, she was at the altar just to my left. As I prayed for the Lord to save someone. And she came up to me after that service. I don't even know what her name was. And she said, Brother Gary. That's what she said. I got saved tonight. Being united is not going to help us a bit unless we acknowledge the Savior and those He has saved. That was worth that night. Amen. That's what made that night special. That's what made that night good. Just one. One soul delivered from hell and given a place in paradise and glory with him. That's what it's about. And we can't fight and scratch one another's eyes out and pull one another's hair, scream and holler at each other and fight like cats and dogs and expect anybody to want that. like Simeon. We got to live that life. And we got to wait. Live every day like it's going to be today. And it could be when Jesus comes again and takes his church to be with him. I want to go, don't you? I don't want to get left behind. I want to be one of them that they say, where'd he go? What happened to him? He used to live right there. Where'd he go? He just gone. <laughs> I hope to see you there. I hope you're ready. I hope you're filled. I hope you're looking. I hope you're watching. I hope you're praying. Because this ain't a game we play in. This is about a destiny of people who are ready. Amen. Thank y'all for being here. I had request to have a special uh, time of prayer uh, for uh, Sister Pat uh, Petty's sister. Her name is Doris Carter. She's struggling with cancer, been struggling with cancer, with cancer for many years. Well, I understand she's taking no treatments or she has not let them do any treatments. How many years now? About 16 years. About 16 years. And the Lord has supplied all of her needs. She, she's very trusting in God. And she has gotten to a point in her life, though, where she's not able to get up and walk. And so she said, told Sister uh, Pat, she said, would you have your church pray for me? Amen. That I can walk. Simple prayer. We got a God that can do it. Amen. So at this time, we're fixing to have special prayer for her. Sister Pat, uh, Pat would, would you come up here? We're, we're just gonna, we're gonna do a, a what, what uh, I'm gonna call a transfer of grace and mercy. We're gonna lay hands on the one she asked to present her to the church. And we're gonna pray that God will hear our prayer. And I just pray that today that woman gets up out of that bed. Amen, Thanks. brother. Would you pray that prayer with me? Would you come up and, and get as close? You don't have to touch anybody if you don't want to. They just gather around and get close. And we're going to pray that, that the Lord would hear this prayer, honor this prayer. 
and move upon her to be able to walk. Amen, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the holy, precious, name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, the name to which everyone is going to bow and confess one day, but the name of the one we love and who loves us, the name of our healer and our great physician, the name of our God and our provider and our king. Amen. Lord, we lift up Sister Doris to you today. We call upon your holy name, God, to grant her this one small request. It may sound small enough, but it's big to her. She loves you, Lord. She believes you. She trusts you. And she believes in our prayer. And Lord, we just pray that today, as this prayer goes forward, God, that you would take your great and mighty hand and, and touch the bed where she lays. Amen. Touch the one that lays on the bed, God. Now, Lord, Bring now. strength to her feeble legs, oh God, and give her a stronger heart, God. And may she get up out of that bed and walk again, Lord. God, you've done it before. We want your will to be done. And we pray, God, that you would encourage this woman's strength and her spirit by this one great act of kindness that you can do, Lord. We pray and ask it in the holy, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 By the promise of your word, Lord. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Where do you see Perry? I was at the guest.